Well, hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We got a pretty exciting video in store for you here today. We've had a great day. We just went and did some adventuring out to an island where there's a couple shipwrecks and some cool scenery and stuff. So we have some cool shots of that coming up and uh, we're gonna look for some big kings now. There's been a lot of good salmon fishing around lately. So stay tuned and we're gonna go see what we can find. Oh my gosh, way down deep. Flash your fly. Oh, that's the way to start the day right there, guys. Bright day on the rigger. Come here, man. We didn't even get three lines of the water. We no, that's our second line. We didn't even get our second line down. This is our diver going out right here. I just put a meat rig on that. I sent this flash of fly down deep with the probe just to check the temperature. And I looked back and it was popped off. <laughs> Feels like a good fish. He went nuts at first. Wow. That was crazy. Oh, there we go. Gosh, drag was a little sticky. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, baby. Nice. Dude, oh, man. Okay, guys. Here we go. Nice male. Mags with the stab. Oh, and she got it. Nice net job. <laughs> nice. Holy smokes. Gosh, we still got our diver clicking out here. We haven't even got two lines in the water. And here we go. Nice. Well guys, we got him in the boat. That was awesome. Put the downrigger down, put this flasher fly on it, down about 120 feet, just to check the temperatures, and didn't even get our second line in the water. I looked back and the thing was popped up and started screaming, so awesome start to our afternoon. Nice king on the rapture trolling fly. That's a rapture trolling fly with the eat chip flasher. Gotta love it, baby. Great start. Four eighty. How do you feel about four eighty? I'm gonna get a workout. <laughs> a little workout in. What's the sitch? This fish feels heavy. We don't even have our, all of our lines in the water yet. That diver, I got the low diver set, and I was just going to click the thing in the high diver. Mags is driving us, getting us on some fish. Doing a good job. Doing a great oh. job. 
And we can't even get our lines in the water. Here we go. Okay. Oh, it's a hog. Oh, it's a big hog. Coming in. Woo! This is a monster, guys. This is a good one. Gonna need some help with this one. Try not to knock the GoPro off. Yep, ready. Holy moly. Here we go. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Oh my gosh. You a little that might be 30 pounder. Jeez, this thing is huge. That might be a 30. If not 30, he's dang close. Wow. Holy man. I told you it was big. I guess. Hey. Finally got him in, guys. He's just as heavy as I thought he was. I'm excited to weigh him when we get in. We'll see. Out here bobbing in the waves. That's got to be close to 30. Just a beautiful fish. Nice, good looking big male. Great job, Mags. Thanks. On the wire diver, flash or fly combo. I gotta drop him. <laughs> that is so awesome. That is so awesome. <laughs> nice. Slime five, baby. All right, let's get another one. So guys, we just had a hard, really hard south wind the last few days. So we got some crazy currents coming out of the south heading north. So all of our bites have been on the south troll. We tried trolling north, but the currents were so strong, they were blowing our lines way back and bring them off to the side. So, you know, just like in a river, if you're river fishing and drifting, same thing on the big lake, you know, you have to have the right drift, you have to have the right troll. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head way back to where we started hitting those fish and we're gonna go back through that same stretch on another south troll. So we're just gonna rip back over there and troll back through them again. So guys, we've been fishing a deep water program today. So the first step, you know, that we kind of go off of to determine how deep we're gonna fish is by the temperature of the water. So on this downrigger here, we have a probe, which is a, a fish hawk. So it tells us our temperature and our speed at which our bait's moving. So we're gonna get our first downrigger out here. We're gonna put it down and we're gonna fish anywhere in, from 60 to about 50 degrees to find where that temperature is at. It should be down about 120 feet or so, 100 feet. So we're gonna see. We have had a lot of south winds lately, so that south wind blows a lot, a lot of warm water back up towards us here. So we're gonna get our downrigger down. We're gonna go with about a 50 foot leader or so here. Um, we're just gonna run, it's just Maggie and I out here, and the fish are really deep right now, so we're just gonna run four divers. We're gonna run four mag divers and two downriggers. We're not gonna run any planer boards or mess with anything like that. We're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna run our best baits down deep, and we're gonna fish simple and easy. So an important thing here, guys, that when you're running four divers, you know, a lot of guys will say, oh, you shouldn't do that. You know, it's too much of a headache. You'll get too many tangles. But when the fish are really deep like this, I like to run four mag divers. You know, a lot of guys will run like one standard size diver on the high and one mag size on the low. 
you know, so it'll separate on depth a little bit. But when these fish are deep like this, I'm trying to get all my lines concentrated into that bite zone. So I got all mag divers, and I'm gonna show you how I like to run those. It's a little tricky, but it can be really effective when those fish go deep. So the, we're gonna start off the first thing is when you're putting your downrigger down, you only wanna go about a 50 foot leader. So you don't wanna go any longer than that or else you might, you're running the risk of tangles. And we're gonna run these downriggers down deep. We're gonna put one at 110 feet down and we're gonna put one at 130 feet down. And when you're setting these downriggers and you're fishing deep water, you always wanna run a bigger size cannonball too. You know, you wanna run at least a 12 pound. I like to go with a 15 when we're fishing below 100 feet, just because there's a lot of currents and sways down there. And those lighter cannonballs, tend to cross over and they'll get tangled and wrapped easier. So we're gonna start off by getting our high diver out first here. So we're gonna run a meat rig on this one. Now you can look at the link to the video and in the description, we did a how to on how to fish flash flying meat rig combos and we break down everything. So if you haven't seen that yet, definitely check that out. But first we're gonna get our high diver out first here. So I'm gonna make sure this is fishing right. Now it can be a little tricky, you know, you got a lot of moving parts here. A lot of lines dangling and stuff. So you just wanna take your time. Take your time, make sure everything gets out right. Everything's fishing good. Okay, so we're gonna get our diver out. Now you can see this is a Magnum Deeper Diver. And we have this set on the number three setting. So this is gonna take our diver way out to the side of the boat or as far as the diver will take it out. Then we're gonna run our low diver on the number one setting. But when, so when you're putting this diver out, guys, I'm gonna start off by reaching out way out to the side of the boat. And when you're letting this out, you always want a little tension in your rod. You always want it to dig just a little bit. If you let that thing just free spool back there, that diver is going to wrap around itself and it's going to get tangled. So you always want a little bit of tension when you're letting it out. So I'm just at first, for the first, you know, 7,500 feet, I'm just going to thumb this just to kind of keep nice, just a little bit of tension on there. I'm just going to let it go out. I got a little bit of tension. I can feel that diver digging. Now, once I get out about, 70, 100 feet. I'm gonna take this out about 100 feet. I'm gonna let that diver just dig out with the drag on its own, so check this out here. I'm gonna put it in the rod holder, and I'm gonna set my drag, just so there's enough bend in the rod. You can see there's a little bend in the rod, but you can see lines ticking out nice and slow. So we're gonna let that, we're just gonna let that work. Okay, now we're gonna put our low out. So we have our downrigger down 100 feet. Now this is where those leaders on your downrigger come and play a big role. So we only have a 50 foot leader off our downrigger. If you try to run a long leader off your downrigger when you're doing this and putting your low diver out, you're gonna catch your leader on your downrigger a lot of times. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'm gonna get my line in the water with my low diver line in the water. Okay, so this is just a good old Michigan Stinger E-chip. Been running them for years, love them. Okay, we're gonna get this guy out. Get our leader out here. And I like to run a little longer leader, but like I said, you know, check out our video on how to fish flash or fly, flash or meat rig combos in the link in the description and you can see all this bro broken down to a T. So, okay guys, so here, this is where it kind of gets tricky. So I'm gonna take this diver, it's on the one setting, I'm gonna let it straight back, but I'm gonna let it out real slow here. So I got my high working on the other side of the boat. I'm gonna run this one straight off the back. And now if I had my other downrigger out, I could run this right in between the two downriggers. But you wanna put it right in the middle and take your time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it dig. I'm gonna go slow. I'm not gonna try to rush anything here. If you try to rush stuff and move too fast, you're gonna end up with a heck of a mess. So I'm just gonna go slow. I'm feeling that diver digging. I'm just letting it out inch by inch. Now I'm gonna let it out to 120 feet. And then I'm gonna show you the next step. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate my lines here a little bit, guys. So I'm gonna run my high diver back 350, and I'm gonna run my low diver back 220. So I'm gonna wait till my high diver gets out to about 250 feet. Now I'm at 140 feet here on my low diver. I'm still going straight behind the boat, but right now is when I'm gonna reach over and put it in the low rod holder here. So I'm gonna put it in the rod holder. I'm gonna click it in. Now this is pulling, so this is fishing right here. Now I'm gonna make sure my drag set, and I'm just gonna let this pull for a minute. I'm just gonna let that diver dig down deep. It's gonna start going deeper as that diver's digging. Now my high's still going out, but my high is out 250 right now. My low's out 140, so they're separated. You always wanna have them separated. Okay, so now I got my divers out. I got them set in the rod holders. My high's at almost 300 feet here. My low's at about 170. 
So I got them both in the rod holders here. I got the drag set so they're pulling, but they're just barely slipping out, and I'm gonna let them slip like that until I want them. So I'm gonna let that high get to 350. I'm gonna run the low at 220, and that's gonna be a perfect combination. You know, this is real tricky, guys, but you know, if you take the steps I showed you, this is gonna work well for you for fishing deep. You know, a lot of guys will say, you know, this is it's a risky way to fish. You get a lot of tangles, but there is a way to do this right, and if you do it right just like this, it's a very effective way to fish deep like you've seen today. Got a wild one on here. Hit that deep, hit that deep downrigger. Man, he about went underneath the boat when he hit that thing. It looks like a good one, baby! Now we just need a double. Oh guys, we just had one slap this high diver. It wasn't up in the tree. Oh, that's a big fish though. Oh, I got him in my own. Oh, I'm the plug. Trying to slip under the boat. <laughs> I'm the plug. Oh, the boat. Oh, plug bite. Plug bite. Just gotta be under a diver. That was a bad. Oh. Yep, I'm over, I'm over a diver for sure. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is jumping. Holy moly! Oh, oh I got to put a non-trip dipsy back in the hole. Oh. Talk about a workout. Big kings are biting when they're really deep like that. They bite kind of like that. When you got those lines laid back, it kind of feels like you broke off almost. You want me to hand land this one? Okay. Okay, guys. Maggie's on the net this time. Funky hand line position. Just really trying to get into our divers over there. I'm gonna try to keep them on the top. I'm gonna ski them on the top. Yeah, come here, fish. Oh, nice net job. Nice, pretty fish. Give you a hand. Oh, what a beauty. What a beautiful fish. What a beautiful fish. Holy 
man guys check this out got our triple got three out of the four we hooked gosh what's the look at these fat fish just little footballs man just chrome butterball <laughs> on the meat rig oh man awesome let's get them back out there our limit if we can get this and he is a tank oh my gosh he's a tank oh he's a tank get him up max 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 get him up oh my gosh oh my gosh got him got him oh my gosh this is a bruiser help me out <laughs> jeez oh pete we're not gonna have room for them, dude. That's like a twin, dude. that other one you caught. Are you kidding me? Okay guys, just got the last one in. Oh, he's big. I'm tired. Look at how big his octopus fin is, it's huge. Just a beautiful wild fish there. Wow, that's so cool. What a great fish. I'm gonna drop him. What a great fish, Mags. What a great fish. Great end to our night. Check out this box we got, guys. Hey guys, we just had an awesome night on the water. Had got a nice box of kings here. It's got a bunch of bunch of nice big fish and got a few smaller cookie cutters. So this is probably the last time we'll get out this summer and uh, catch these nice quality table fare fish. I'm gonna get busy in the river soon, so. Yeah, we're gonna fill up our freezer with these and right after this, Maggie's gonna show you an awesome salmon burger recipe, so you won't wanna miss that. Stay tuned. So we're back in the kitchen again, guys, and this week I'm gonna be showing you an awesome salmon burger recipe that we've been making. Obviously, we went out and we caught a lot of fish this week, so I'm gonna show you how to make one batch of this, which makes about four burgers, but we're actually gonna make up most of that fish we caught, make it into patties and freeze it for the rest of the winter. So I'm gonna get started on this and show you guys how to put this together. So I just put the burgers in the fridge to chill and while they chill I'm going to go ahead and make a homemade tartar sauce.
So we just finished up our tartar sauce. It's been about 30 minutes since we put the burgers in the fridge. Um, and so now we're gonna take them out and we're gonna go grill them. So we're gonna get our burgers on the grill here now. Now the first step you wanna do is get an aluminum grill sheet. Now you can get these at any kind of grocery store, convenience store. Um, you, I like to do them on this aluminum sheet here just because the salmon burgers have a tendency to flake more than say like a regular burger would. So I'm gonna put these on the grill here. I'm gonna turn the grill on. I'm just gonna put it on medium heat and let it warm up for five to 10 minutes here. So let's get this on. So our grill's nice and heated up here, so we're just gonna add a little bit of olive oil to our tray. I'm gonna get that on there. Just a little sprinkle on. A little glaze, we'll spread it around and stuff. Okay. Now, when you add your salmon burgers, before you put them on here, you wanna make sure you keep your burgers in the fridge right up until you put them on, just so they stay together better. That'll just help them stay together better. Okay, so we're gonna get these on and we're just gonna kind of keep an eye on them as they go. We just want them to get them just nice and golden brown on each side is what we're looking for. So we're gonna go start with five minutes, shut the lid. We're gonna start with five minutes and we're gonna check them. So while the burgers cook, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some of the stuff we like to add to them. So I'm gonna add some tomato and some red onion. So we've just been keeping an eye on them here. It's been about seven, eight minutes. So we're gonna flip them. Now oh, that's perfect, they're nice and golden brown. Oh yeah, those look great. Oh, those look so good. All right, so I really like mozzarella cheese on mine. I think this is a pretty dang good combo. You could go pepper jack too, but this is what we have in the fridge and I really like this one. My burgers here. All right, we're gonna close the lid. We're gonna let them go for another, I don't know, five, 10 minutes maybe. Check them and once they're golden brown on the other side, they're gonna be ready to rock. It's time, baby. It is time. It's so dang good. There is zero fishy taste to this, just like Maggie's salmon casserole recipe in the last episode. There's absolutely no fishy taste to this. And if you check out that video in the link in the description, about halfway through, we do a segment on how to uh, take all the brown meat off the fish and it just completely eliminates all the fishy taste. And it makes such a big difference. Guys, we really hope you enjoyed our video this week. Maggie's big fish ended up almost being 31 pounds and she had another one in the upper 20s. So we just had a great night on the water and I hope you give the salmon burger recipe a try. You won't be disappointed. If you do, make sure to drop a comment below and let us know what you think. So if you enjoyed the video, we'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe and we'll see you back here in a couple weeks in our next video.